Edgar Allan Poe Matt now. Movie. Last week's happy guest. Yeah, he was a happy guest. Uh, it's all about Edgar Allan Poe. It's the movie is The Raven, and here's some well, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, as you said when you were describing before, it's a reimagining of the end of Edgar Allan Poe's life. John Cusack plays Edgar Allan Poe. There've been umpteen Edgar Allan Poe screen adaptations over the years. I think the first one was something like 1911. So not only does he loom large over the history of horror literature, but he looms very, very large over the history of cinema. So the story is that there is a series of gruesome murders, and the murders appear to be following the template of Edgar Allan Poe's writing, therefore making Edgar Allan Poe, as played by John Cusack, a suspect. Here's a clip. Am I under arrest? I'm Detective Fields. Please sit down, Mr. Poe. Yes, the infamous Detective Fields. Am I under arrest? No, not as yet. Then I'd rather stand. It makes it easier to leave. I am, uh, I'm a reader of your work. Well, I admit that many of my admirers have gone to great lengths to meet me. Oh, I didn't say I was an admirer. And yet, you read them. The night before last, a young girl and her mother were found murdered. The daughter's body was lodged in a chimney. The mother's head was nearly severed with a straight razor. The killer eluded capture through a window in which a lock was feigned with a nail sawn in half. Does any of this sound familiar to you, Mr. Poe? But you're talking about my story. A work of fiction. I'm afraid I am not. So... John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe. If you start looking back at the history of Poe through cinema, you know, oh, there's the obviously famous, famously that Roger Corman's, I've told this story before, but, but you know, my dad went to see Pit and the Pendulum and was completely freaked out by it. And I'm, I'm sure that one of the reasons that I ended up being a horror film fan was that my dad had been completely wigged out by a horror movie. And then, you know... What did he tell you about it then? He said it was just, just it was really, really, he was really creeped out by it and he could barely talk about it. And there's, if you're a, if you're a kid, there's nothing more alluring than the idea that your parents say this thing is really really bad so you know so you kind of become fascinated by it therefore I started sort of being interested in you know just to annoy your dad well no but it's well that reduces it to, to a completely infantile level well done yeah but you know while you're dumbing down I'm dumbing up and saying that actually I think that's you know it can be it can be a good thing to have a love of horror but you know there's there's a lot of the history of Poe throughout cinema and all the because if you're an Italian horror fan you know it looms large over you know Fulci and Barber and of course Dario Argento did two evil eyes with George Romero and some of those movies have been good and some of them have been not so good at all this is directed by James McTeague who made V for Vendetta and actually it has a, a fairly similar tone when V for Vendetta first came out it got very bad reviews I mean, it was, the release was delayed for a while anyway because of news stories and it, was, it kind of got caught up with things that they thought it would you know, somehow it would be a film that you know that could be tied up with terrorism because now you see the V for Vendetta mask everywhere you know when there's the the anti-capitalist protest that mask that everyone's wearing is of course the V for Vendetta mask and it has now sort of become established as something of a classic which it wasn't at the time at all this does have a very similar tone it also reminded me tonally of From Hell the Hughes Brothers movie and of course the other interesting thing about that is once again you're being reminded of uh, something which owes a debt to a graphic novel but is sneered at by fans of graphic novels and is generally not regarded as having done a good job. I like From Hell and I like the Hughes Brothers but I understand that those are not films that are liked by either generally by critics or by widespread audiences or indeed by the people who love the source material from which they're drawn. The thing I liked about The Raven was firstly that it it moved forward and you know in a week in which John Carpenter John Carpenter <laughs> John Carpenter from France is out um the fact that anything That's his new name yeah, exactly. The that kind of works. The fact that anything has a you know a, a nice conceit, a sort of you know a, a cyclical narrative, you know, starts here and we go back and it moves round and it moves through the post stories and it's quite, it's quite wittily literate. I mean, not not overly so, but and it's visually stylish. The uh, you know there's there is some gore and nastiness in it, but I don't think you didn't really have a you're not oh, you're not you, a fan of the of gore and nastiness, but that, it didn't put you off, did it? Well, apart with the exception of well, we, we mentioned the exception of the pit and the pendulum. Yeah, th there is a there is a, a, a critic of Poe's who I mean we mentioned this in the interview who cops it spectacular style and <laughs> it is it spectacular yeah, and it is the pendulum and it gets lower and lower yeah and, that's the pin the pendulum know, and it's you know that's that's it's time to look away yeah can I just tell you if you thought that was time to look away you should see two evil eyes well I have no intention of seeing two evil eyes so okay so I can I can lend you a DVD I really it? really wouldn't bother because I'll use it as a beer mat really okay yes. fine okay or two of like but like apart that. from I mean that's that that's the grimmest but, bit yes but you thought that it was just on a, on the level of sort of a mystery story a detective story you know a who done it sort of story that idea about you know that somebody's greatest fan being their greatest stalker the idea of somebody being somebody who writes about horrible deaths somehow suddenly finding yourself plagued by no, people I mean, in acting I, mean, I enjoyed it and he and John Cusack's very good and it's better than 2012 let's 
let's be honest about it. Yeah, no, but a lot of things are tw- better than 2012 because 2012 is great, big, flatulent, awful. And people keep writing in saying, can you, can you please point out that you can't have post-apocalyptic, that it's apocalyptic, and the post is kind of inherent in the apocalypse. But I kind of enjoyed The Raven. I mean, yes, it has, it has, a, it, it has a, a, a comic strip style to it, and I understand that if you wanted to be sneering about it, you probably could be. And if you were somebody who was, uh, you know, a, a, a great devout Poe fan, you'd probably, you'd probably get antsy about the, the liberties that are taken with his life and with his works. But actually, as a good pulpy pot boiler and as a companion piece to V for Vendetta and as something which is, you know, visually stylish, has just enough thematic substance it is sort of held together by Cusack's central performance because he is engaging he is a very engaging screen anti-hero and I thought the way it's I mean it, it sort of gets preposterous towards it but how can it sort of get preposterous it's an Edgar Allan Poe you know it is a story about Edgar Allan Poe so preposterousness is at its heart but if you like From Hell and if you like V for Vendetta and if you like those kind of movies which have got you know had a critically bad time but actually have stood the test of time on your video shelves then I think you'll like The Raven and certainly there have been so many genuinely rubbish Poe adaptations over the years that it's nice to see one that was on the right side you know more than 50% good and as a, an end title sequence which looks like there's been added on from a completely different movie well, it's, a, mean, bit, a, it's a bit a like cup, a, a girl couple, with a dragon tattoo a couple of people have said this a couple of people have said where you know, did this come from yeah they said that when everything flags down should we just stick a sort of flashy you know end title sequence actually that didn't bother me so much I think, it would, I think that would only be an issue if you'd found the movie itself boring and I didn't it's find not boring. it's not boring no. it's not boring it's got characters that you're kind of interested in it's got reference to stories that you kind of know about it's got a, a, a mystery plot that you sort of can you know can follow and get intrigued with it has some splattery ex- 